Hello and welcome to today's podcast. Today we're talking about early phase oncology trials with featured guest Megan Howland. Megan is the Vice President of Therapeutic Strategy for Oncology, Rare Disease, and Inflammatory Medicine at Worldwide Clinical Trials. Well, welcome Megan. We're so excited to have you today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's give everyone a little bit more information about you. Megan has over 20 years of clinical and drug development expertise with a focus on early phase oncology, immunology, and rare disease. She also has over 25 years of experience across multiple other therapeutic areas. And this is just just the beginning of her experience, really. So without further ado, Megan, let's jump right into it. What are some of the challenges associated with early phase oncology clinical trials, specifically for patients? Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, I think there are several challenges in oncology clinical trials, particularly as we're getting to more targeted therapies. And some of those include just smaller populations of patients because we are looking at um, different targets. Uh, The other thing that's particularly challenging is we still don't have great representation for a large group of patients for participation in oncology trials. So if you take a look at how many patients that actually participate, it's it's less than 10% still. And a full two-thirds of that population are the elderly, and sometimes you can see only 2 to 3% of that population, and, and that's a lot of your clinical trial population for oncology. So what that does is it ends up impacting in a couple ways. Um, you can have delayed recruitment or closure of your trial because you can't actually get the patients into the trial. The other thing that's a bit of a challenge is we have issues sometimes with the clinical practice and the location of the trial center, meaning the catchment area of early phase clinical trials may be two to three hours away, and a patient that may be on their second or third line of therapy may not either have the resources to be able to get to the clinical trial site, or they may not want to spend that time, particularly where they are in their disease state, to go to that clinical trial site. So making sure that there is a patient centricity when you are designing your clinical trials and allowing those provisions and some innovative things in the community to where some of the routine testing, maybe they can go to their local physician office to eliminate some of the time that they may have to travel and spend at the major medical center. And a lot of this comes down to physician willingness to talk with their patient and participate in the clinical trial. You know, certainly the patient-physician relationship is incredibly important, um, particularly as you're dealing with Um, with a potentially a terminal illness. So the conversation has to be very focused. It has to be very directed, taking care to address the patient needs. You know, the other thing that we can do is make sure that we're removing any barriers that we can from a site perspective because there are physicians that really are reticent to participate because of the site support that is needed, whether that's from um, support in the paperwork, um, if that's support in the staff to be able to safely conduct the clinical trial. So there are definitely different strategies that we can do to be able to help support that. Tell me more about that. What should drug developers look for when choosing a CRO? So you need a CRO that's global. Um, You need a CRO that has excellent site relationships and that understands the science. You know, for an early phase oncology population, it's incredibly important that you are on top of every single patient and that the sites are treated as partners and not as commodities and that you're working with these sites um, to be able to help them get what they need, whether it's um, additional support at the site or whether it is regional support um, within the monitoring team or within the management team to help them be successful. So there's a flexibility, you know, there's a personalization aspect, there's a nimbleness, and then certainly um, understanding the science and what you're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Well, Megan, thank you so much for coming to do a series of podcasts with us about early phase oncology trials. We're just getting started with this topic, and we will be releasing more from my interview with Megan in the coming weeks everything from challenges, trends, CRO support, and everything in between. For more information about how Worldwide Clinical Trials can help you during your early phase 
Oncology Clinical Trial, click the link at the end of this podcast or visit www.worldwide.com.